Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will continue the penal data modeling. So, in the last lectures, we have just entered or discussed little bit about the penal data setting. So, in the last lectures, uh, you can say we highlighted uh, you can say various types of data, then how we, uh, we move to penal data and what is the advantage of penal data and what are the disadvantages of penal data. Okay. So, today, today we will specifically highlight the estimation part of the penal data model. So, so far as a penal data model is concerned, there are three different uh, uh, modeling setup. One is called as a pool data models, then fixed effect models and random effect models. Okay. So, basically, so panel data modeling, so we will together have three different setup. We have three different setup all together. One is called as a pool data. Okay. Then, this is fixed effect models. Fixed effect model. Popularly called as a F. E M fixed effect model, okay. Then this is pool data model, popularly known as P D M. Then this is random effect model. Popularly known as R E M random effect models, okay. So all together there are three different uh, models pool pool data models, fixed effect models and random effect models. So, pool data specifically we are just pulling the cross sectional and time series observation without having the uh, impact of you can say uh, inter, uh, you know time uh, individual uh, effects and you know time series effect. So, we are just uh, you know uh, uh, just observing or pulling the data and estimating the process. So, it is not a uh, pure features of penal data setting. So, pure penal features of penal data setting we can observe from this fixed effect model and random effect model. So, before we uh, highlight the detailed estimation process of pool data models, random effect models and, and uh, a fixed effect model. So, we briefly highlight the exact difference between random effect models and you know fixed effect models because these two are purely represented as a penal data modeling okay purely represented as a penal data modeling in one case the impact on uh, error term this in this fixed effect uh, term this is on intercept the impact is on intercept that means uh, the t time and i impact tie t and i impact will go to uh, intercept and uh, in this random effect t t and i impact will go to the you know error terms this time it will go to the error terms all right so that means in this penal data settings so we basically highlight the difference between this fixed effect model and random effect model so fixed effect models so since penal data is there so there is a sample structure is a it so the it impact will go to the intercept and ti impact will go to the error term if we observe means the moment we really use it then obviously sample size will be exclusively very high and it is just like multiplication of i into t that is the total number of observations we have to observe in the case of penal data setting so obviously it is very it is extremely advantage for us to go for the estimation but in the meantime when we will go for clubbing the time series and individual aspects means cross sectional aspects then obviously uh, there is some error component complexity will start that complexity can be observed through 
intercept term and can be observed through error terms. So, if it is observed through intercept, then it is called as a fixed defect model, and it is if it is observed through error component, then it is called as a random effect model. So, now we will see. So, that means this particular two, this particular two, the fixed defect model and random effect model are very important uh, uh, for this panel data setting. So, uh, before we go for the estimation, let me highlight the technical difference between these two random effect model and fixed effect models. Okay. So, uh, uh, let me highlight this difference between fixed effect model and random effect models. So, this is called as a fixed effect models and the random effect models. Okay. So, now you see first is with respect to functional form, first with respect to functional form this is with respect to functional form. So, we have already mentioned. So, for fixed effect models, so the model will be written like this y i t is equal to alpha plus b y plus beta x i t plus say v i t. Okay. So, this is how the fixed uh, functional form of the uh, functional form of the you can say uh, this fixed effect model. So, in the case of random effect model, this can be written as a y i t equal to alpha plus beta x i t plus mu y plus b i t. Okay. So, this is how the random effect models. Okay. So, then second difference with respect to second uh, second difference with respect to is with respect to intercepts. Okay. So, second dis difference is with respect to intercepts. Okay. Intercept alpha alpha. So, that means alpha uh, no sorry intercept is mu i here and here it is not there. So, that means it is varying uh, it is varying across varying across groups or you can say times and or both it can be times. Okay. Here you know it is intercept is a constant absolutely it is constant in the case of random effect model. Okay. Random effect model. So, now uh, the difference can be observed in many angles. So, first observation is for functional form with respect to functional form, then second of, uh, difference we can observe through its inter impact of intercept and third observation we have to observe through third observation we have to with respect to error variance. Okay. Error variance, error variance okay. this is error variance okay. with respect to error variance. What is this error variance? So, this is constant here. Okay. Now, it is varying across groups or time okay. groups or times okay. or n times. Then, fourth, fourth, uh, uh, fourth difference we can find through slopes. Okay. Fourth difference we can find through slopes. This is constant and slope will be constant. If it is very then it is called as a, uh, a dynamic panel data model. So, we will discuss in later stage. So, in the meantime <coughs> this is uh, slopes and uh, constants. So, 5 then uh, uh, estimation technique estimation estimation technique. Okay. This is what is the technical difference between estimation technique? No, we will use here least square dummy variable technique. Least square dummy variable technique that to you know uh, within effect and between effect. Okay. Then here we will use generalized least square method and feasible generalized least square methods. Okay. So this right means random effect models can be. A, a can be analyzed under generalized least square method means can be estimated through generalized least square method or feasible generalized least square method. And sixth is six difference we can observe through hypothesis testing, hypothesis testing. Okay, hypothesis testing. So in that case, uh, we will apply incremental test, incremental test. Then is is we will uh, will apply BPLM test. BPLM test. Okay. So these are the complete difference between this uh, fixed effect model and random effect model. So that means you know uh, when we will go for uh, panel data modeling. So we have two different setup. One is fixed effect models and random effect model. So in the case of fixed effect model, 
uh, we can write start with the functional form y i t which is equal to alpha mu i plus beta x i t plus b i t then u i t equal to alpha plus beta x i t mu i plus b i t. So, now uh, this model can be uh, you know distinguish means they can different from each others with respect to intercept in one case intercept will vary with respect to groups and uh, groups or individuals of time. So, that is what is called as a fixed effect model. So, in the case of uh, random effect model the intercept is absolutely constant ok. In the case again uh, the another component which will make the difference is error variance in the random uh, for random effect models uh, error variance will vary, but in the case of fixed effect model it will remain constant ok. In the case of uh, slope coefficients. So, both a fixed effect model and random effect model are absolutely constant ok. Then estimation technique in the case of estimation technique uh, uh, for fixed effect models we will apply least square domain variable technique that to within effect and between effect. So, that means the technique which we have used in the case of domain variable modeling that to dummy dependency structures ok. Because here uh, here we are uh, whatever we are discussing in the panel data setting here. So, all are in a linear model here. So, okay, we are not using any uh, non-linear models. Okay, uh, the way we have discussed in the case of domain variable modeling, where we have used logit model and probit model, these are purely uh, you know non-linear models, uh, where uh, you know a, a binary choice model or linear probability model is specifically linear in nature, but in other case it is purely non-linear in nature. Even if domain de domain dependency technique, uh, uh, domain independence technique where we have also discussed entire uh, uh, means the entire discussion was with respect to linear model only. So, that particular because uh, domain depend domain independency model means uh, that is just like a uh, multivariate regression modeling where we are capturing something uh, extra issue there. So, but the a, a modeling approach is completely same. For instance, we are just uh, likely uh, means one of the standard assumption uh, we observe in that particular structure, structure setup is that uh, we have to apply OLS technique and provided all these parameters should be linear in nature. Okay, all the parameters should be linear in nature, but which is not the case in the case of dummy dependency model that to logit model and probit models. So, here also we are just uh, means this particular panel data modeling is the uh, deductive part of this uh, dummy independency technique. So, that means we have discussed uh, dummy independent variable modeling. So, which is you not know, means panel data is just uh, you know borrowed from that particular technique. If, if you are very clear and if you understand very clearly the panel uh, you know dummy independence technique then obviously, uh, to understand the panel data modeling is not so difficult or to uh, uh, you know estimate the panel data modeling is also not difficult, but if you have any a, a, any con, you know constraints in the uh, uh, constant on understanding particularly on the in dummy independence technique then obviously, you will face the problem here in the panel data modeling that to in a linear setup. So, in any case so I have already uh, um, given the signal how uh, uh, what is the exactly panel data setting. Uh, how you have to enter to the panel data, what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages and what are the techniques we have to apply, what are the uh, basic models, uh, basic models in the case of panel data settings. So, that to pull model, pull the pull models, then pulled OLS models, then you know fixed effect models, then you know random effect models. So, then uh, just now we have highlighted the difference between fixed effect model and random effect model that too with respect to its functional forms and the rule of intercept, rule of slopes, then you know it is a estimation process, then error variance, then you know it is a techniques and it is a hypothesis testing. So, it is completely different only one case the slope is usually we are assuming here constant because we are uh, we are taking the linear functional form of this model. So, means we are discussing panel data setting we are just clubbing the time series and cross sectional time and in the same times we are assuming that they are all linearly related to each other. Just we are observing how cross sectional unit have a impact when we uh, club the panel data and time, time series data and when we uh, what is the impact of time series again when we will club the cross sectional observation with the time. So, that is our objective of this panel data settings ok. With this basic difference between random effect model and fixed effect models. So, we like to proceed here the estimation process of you know panel data setting. So, how how this te, uh, you know techniques can be used and what is the uh, estimation procedures. So, how we have to get out the uh, means come out with this uh, estimation estimator 
estimated outcome. So, that we have to discuss here. Okay. So, now the basic theme is here. You see here. So, uh, what we have discussed now this panel data modeling is basically in three different setup. Okay. So, one is called as a pool data, pool data modeling, then fixed effect model, then random effect models. Okay. So, this is one, this is second, this is third. Let, let us first highlight what is this pool data mod models, then we will move to random fixed effect model and random effect model. It is very well connected. Okay. So, you proceed first this one, we first go with the this one, then we move to this one, then we move to this one. This sequence is very uh, perfect. Okay. So, then see uh, what is the my suggestion is that when you, uh, when you are uh, investing some problems with respect to panel data, then it is better uh, you have to follow this particular path. You observe this particular problem or investigate the investigate that particular problem with the pool data modeling and uh, then you have to proceed for fixed effect modeling, then you have to go for this random effect modeling. Then the, uh, means uh, uh, after that you will get the complete picture of panel data analysis. So, you, you can uh, means that means once you have the all these results, then you can come to a conclusion what is the exact shape of this particular uh, structure and how panel data is very handy to investigate that particular uh, you know uh, problems. Okay. So, now uh, what is all about this pool data setting? So, I, I will just uh, observe here one thing uh, that is what uh, let us start with the pool data modeling, this pool data modeling. So, what is this pool data modeling? So, pool data modeling is just like here y i t equal to alpha plus beta x i t plus summation e i t. Okay. So, this is pool data modeling the general format. So, then similarly uh, in fixed effect modeling, fixed effect modeling we have like this y i t equal to uh, you can say alpha uh, then uh, then we can uh, you, you see mu i t uh, mu i plus uh, beta x i t plus uh, u i t say. Okay. So, then random effect models will be y i t equal to alpha plus beta x i t plus uh, you know u i t plus b i t. Okay. So, this is how the complete setup of uh, these three models. Okay. So, this the basic framework of this three model is like this. So, now we like to know how to estimate all these things. So, means we like to know what is this alpha and beta component, we like to know this alpha uh, then mu component and uh, then beta component then also this u observation v observation these are the things we have to observes, but you remember one thing here. So, uh, when we will uh, when we will discuss all these things there are certain constants or condition because here uh, we are observing that i equal to 1 to up to n and t equal to 1 to uh, 1 to up to t. Okay. So, this is how the so, so total sample size. So, total sample size is so, total sample size in each case is i into t Okay, uh, sorry, n into t. So that is what it's called as a n t. Okay, this is n t. So this is total uh, sample size. So now we will little bit know something about the estimation procedure of pool data modeling, fixed effect modeling, and random effect modeling. Let let us highlight what is all about this particular uh, issue. So we start with the we start with the pool data modeling first. So pool data modeling the structure is y i t equal to alpha plus uh, sorry uh, is equal to alpha plus beta x i t plus e i t. Okay. So, this is how the uh, usual uh, usual structure of you know uh, as usual uh, you know is the structure of cross sectional modeling or you can say and then uh, time series modeling. So, it is just clo uh, clubbing the uh, uh, clubbing the data of time series and cross section, but uh, we use OLS uh, simply. Okay, we are not uh, studying the you know the variation aspect here. So, this is how the pool data modeling is all about, but pool data will be handy when it has to means once you will apply the OLS, then OLS is a uh, standard assumption. So, with the basis of standard assumption we have to uh, uh, you, we, we have to go for this estimation. So, what are the standard assumption here? So, now the basic standard assumption is that uh, covariance of covariance of uh, summation uh, I t or uh, summation uh, J t sorry summation you see it is long uh, I t or it is better you put here U i t. Okay. So, then U i t 
then u j t u j t u j t is equal to 0. This is standard one assumption. Second assumption is that covariance of uh, u i t and u i t minus 1 is equal to 0. That is what correlation problems. This is heteroscedity problem. Then third third is the error of uh, error of as mean of error terms u i t must be equal to 0. Uh, okay, so th this will be lead to heteroscedity problem. This will be lead to autocorrelation problem, and this is uh, some of the mean. Uh, okay, deviation of mean from the uh, uh, central point should be equal to zero. That will be, has to be satisfied. Fourth, then uh, variance of variance of u i t should be sigma square u. So the, the, uh, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the, this this is uh, this is even a heteroscedity problem. In fact, this is heteroscedity problem. This is heteroscedity problem if I uh, I not equal I equal to j. If I not equal to j, then it will turn down like a autocorrelation problem. Okay, this is like a autocorrelation problem. So now, uh, in the if all these conditions are satisfied, then you know uh, we, we can spending its time uh, means then we can estimate by spending with the time period only. So let's see, there are two ways you can estimate this process. You know, first uh, keeping i constant, you apply the t, vari t variations and keeping t constant you make the i variations then we will see how is the structure all together so, okay so let us start with the first uh, uh, you know varying t, t and i remain constant so you see here t t, t and uh, t remain constant if t remain constant then the model will be y i 1 uh, equal to uh, alpha plus beta i 1 plus summation uh, summation u uh, u uh, i 1 okay u i 1 so that means here t is varying if you will start varying t then obviously when t equal to 1 then we will find y i 1 equal to alpha plus beta i 1 uh, sorry beta x i 1 okay. beta x i 1 beta x i 1 okay plus u i 1 u i 1 so, okay this is first model so now uh, when t equal to 2 so when t equal to 2 then y i 2 is equal to uh, alpha plus beta x i 2 plus u i 2 u i 2 ok it will continue so now when t equal to t then obviously so y i t is equal to alpha plus beta x i t plus beta x i t plus u i t so this is how the structure is all about so now you see you, uh, the model uh, the model is represented here is y i t equal to alpha plus beta x i t y a u i t so now uh, uh, the condition is that here you have to estimate the model and uh, by default OLS is the uh, easiest technique to apply so for applying OLS conditions means OLS techniques so uh, this condition has to be satisfied let us assume that these conditions are satisfied then obviously the model will be categorically grouped like this so that means one one case uh, here we are putting i remain constant okay i remain constant if you put i remain constant then obviously and t is making variations then obviously the structure will be like this so now in another case keeping t remain constant if you will make i variation then obviously you will get the another setup okay let us see if t is varying uh, uh, t remain constant and i varying how is the shape okay so now same same structures you will start with you know y i t equal to alpha plus uh, beta x i t beta x i t plus u i t okay so then uh, when t remain constant uh, when t remain constant okay t remain constant t remain constant and i uh, i will vary 1 2 up to n then what is the setup then the model will be y 1 t is equal to alpha plus beta x 1 t summation 1 t plus t equal to 1 2 up to t okay so this is first case so when i equal to 1 this is the structure when i equal to 2 then y 2 t equal to alpha plus beta x 2 t plus summation to uh, sorry uh, 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 this is u it is beta uh, we put u no sorry u 1 2 so this is u 2 t u 2 t so uh, then uh, when i equal to 3 then y 3 t uh, equal to alpha plus beta x 3 t plus u 3 t ok so this is how the proceeds so when i equal to n because i i varies from 1 to n 
So, y n t n t equal to alpha plus beta x n t okay, plus u n t okay, u n t. So, this is how the procedure all about. So, now you remember here. So, the moment uh, the moment you you use you know pull data analysis then obviously uh, obviously uh, you uh, you have to apply wireless techniques. So, means uh, uh, if provided your condition must be satisfied whatever we have discussed the covariance of u i upon j t, t com, remain constant and you know uh, t t i upon t minus 1 or, or t minus 2 keeping uh, i uh, i remain constant it should be equal to 0 and you know variance of error term must be constant and obviously error mean of the error term should be equal to 0 if all these conditions are satisfied then you can simply apply the wireless technique okay but uh, if you apply wireless technique then obviously there are two different setup of models really means it will um, it will give you signal of two different aspects of modeling in one case i equal to constant t vary and uh, another case t remain constant i will vary if i i constant t vary then that is the setup and if t is constant i will vary then this is the setup okay so this is how the complete setup of the modeling so now uh, with the help of uh, information you can just uh, uh, apply the ols technique and have the estimated results then as usual you have to go for its you know specification test overall fitness of the test and also you go for other problems means you have to test like this heterocarcity issue water correlation issue then multi covalent issue uh, so, and so on okay so this is how the all together about the pool data and uh, pool data modeling so now uh, in fact, uh, before going to panel data modeling, so pool data and uh, uh, modeling, uh, the basic structure of pool data modeling must be known to us. Okay, so that is how we have discussed. So now we will move to fixed effect modeling. Okay, so what is uh, 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 what is the structure of fixed effect modeling? So what is the fixed effect modeling? So fixed effect effect modeling, the general framework is like this. So y i t y i t equal to alpha plus uh, alpha plus uh, mu i uh, mu i uh, plus uh, uh, beta x i t plus uh, u i t beta x i t here we are assuming slope remain uh, constant okay both the cases we are assuming slope remain constant so when slope remain constant then obviously the structure is like this way so when uh, the model can be written like this way also y i t equal to alpha plus uh, in fact, mu t keeping i remain constant plus beta x i t plus u i t. Okay, and this can be written. So this is this can this uh, this is uh, form one. This is second form you can write. Then there is another form format you can use. So that is equal to alpha plus mu i plus uh, it's 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 better it's better you put here. Uh, this is delta t let us say this is delta t all right so uh, mu i and this is delta t plus beta x i t plus u i t okay so this is third format so any format you can use for this fixed effect modeling so now uh, for uh, we use this particular model so because it is more uh, more compact uh, uh, to analyze the panel data modeling that to fixed effect modeling so when we will go for fixed effect modeling then obviously uh, the impact of uh, individual and intercept uh, in, in time series will go to uh, particular intercept term. So, we like to know what is the impact of you know uh, uh, how this impact of uh, in individual and times will go to the intercept. If it is purely going to intercept then we are observing here through mu i and if you are going purely towards the time series then obviously it is del delta t and if you are observing two then you, you will club it mu i plus delta t okay so then if you you know uh, classify this particular structures i mean so if you uh, put it in elaborate way then the model will be like this y i t equal to uh, alpha plus like this you know uh, uh, you know let us say uh, mu uh, mu 2 uh, or uh, gamma 2 gamma 2 uh, w 2 t plus gamma 3 w 3 t okay plus gamma n w okay gamma n w n t okay n t then plus uh, delta 1 uh, delta 1 um, delta 2 z i t uh, z i 2 uh, z i 2 okay z i 2 plus delta 3 uh, z i 
I3, uh, Z I3, okay, plus uh, continue delta T, uh, Z I, I T, okay, Z I T plus beta X I T, beta X I T plus U I T, okay. Uh, uh, okay, uh, that means uh, what we have done here. So here, uh, what is here? Uh, w W I T R dummy here. W I T and uh, you know Z I T Z I T R dummy. Okay, so this is how the dummy application are used here in the panel data setting. So one observed through time series issue and another is observed through cross sectional issue. So what is W I T W I T equal to Oh, uh, you know, oh, it is equal to one. Uh, if for uh, i e one, you know, i equal to i equal to one to up to n. Okay, so this is W I T. So this is W I T. Mm, then uh, 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 it will be equal to zero. Otherwise, okay. Otherwise, so similarly, uh, for Z I T, for Z I T, it is equal to it is equal to one for uh, time for period only for period that is t equal to one, uh, 1 2 up to t and 0 otherwise okay 0 otherwise so this is how the structure is all about this particular setup so now what you have to do you see here so uh, here there are uh, observe total observation is nt okay so these are the means these are the parameters which we like to estimate okay so that means we have taken alpha to uh, you know uh, wit is the cross sectional observation so cross sectional observation in fact we have put here mu mu i okay so instead of mu i you put it here gamma i so that will be uh, easily understand okay so it's better to put gamma i here then it is a delta okay it's already delta okay so delta t that is how because it should be very consistent with uh, with that particular shape because we just expanded this particular model with the, this particular models okay so with the having this particular structures so now uh, you know there are uh, uh, there are three different aspects here so uh, keeping t remain constant if i will vary how is the setup and if keeping uh, t remain constant if will i i will make vary then how is the setup the way we have discussed in the case of pool data analysis okay let's see here so how is that setup so now this modeling uh, the modeling setup is like this the modeling setup modeling setup is like this uh, modeling setup is here so for i equal to 1 so that means what we will do we will make a i variation and t variation so accordingly we will see how is the modeling behavior here for the estimation uh, for, for the estimation angle only okay so when i equal to 1 for i equal to 1 okay so t when t equal to 1 then it will be y y 1 1 equal to alpha plus beta x 1 i plus u 1 1 okay so this is this is first model and then when t equal to 2 okay t equal to 2 then y 1 2 equal to alpha plus delta 2 uh, plus beta x 1 2 plus u 1 2 okay so this is another models then when t equal to 3 t equal to 3 then obviously y 1 3 equal to alpha plus delta 3 alpha plus delta 3 this should be one intercept okay this will come into intercept format then plus beta x 1 3 plus u 1 3 okay so it will continue it will continue then when t equal to t then obviously u 1 t equal to alpha plus delta t plus beta x 1 t plus u 1 t this is this is how the first setup when i equal to 1 similarly when i equal to 2 when i equal to 2 then for no sorry for i equal to 2 when t equal to 1 then the model will be model will be y t y t 1 y t 1 equal to alpha plus gamma 2 gamma 2 uh, gamma 2 plus uh, plus beta uh, beta x 2 1 okay this is for okay this is right uh, then beta uh, x 1 uh, beta x 2 1 plus u 2 1 so, okay so when t equal to 2 then it will be y 2 2 okay y 2 2 then obviously it will be it will be a, a gamma plus 
sorry alpha plus gamma 2 plus delta 2 ok it is both in both will be added now plus beta x 2 2 plus u, u 2 2 ok. So, him, similarly uh, when uh, it will continue when t equal to t ok. So, then y 2 t is equal to alpha plus uh, gamma 2 ok uh, gamma 2 because i equal to 2 here ok. Then delta t plus beta x 2 t plus u 2 t ok u u 2 t ok u 2 t this is how beta b, u 2 t ok for this is i equal to i equal to 2 only then similarly it will continue then for i equal to n when uh, when for i equal to n uh, n then t equal t 1 t equal to uh, n means y n 1 uh, equal to alpha plus gamma uh, ga, uh, gamma n ok plus uh, beta x n 1 plus uh, u n 1 ok. So, similarly y n 2 means t when t equal to 2 for i equal to n then y n 2 equal to alpha plus gamma n plus delta 2 uh, delta 2 plus u uh, sorry beta uh, sorry plus beta x n 2 beta x n 2 plus u n 2 ok. So, it will continue it will continue then when t equal to t then obviously y n t is equal to y n t is equal to alpha plus gamma n plus delta t ok plus uh, plus beta x n t plus u n t ok. So, this is how the model model has to be expanded. So, that means so as usual the format is with respect to means we are targeting the a, a, a variation individual variations and time series variation on intercept. So, obviously, we have a gamma i and delta t gamma will gamma i will take the care will take care the variation of individual units and delta t a, will take care the a time series a, effect ok. So, ultimately a, in the in one case when we will make i a, i will vary and t will vary the model modeling structure will be completely a means it will co, co, it will go uh, accordingly. So, uh, what we have done here? So, keeping uh, for uh, putting uh, for i equal to 1 then we are making t variation then we get the setup when i equal to 2 then t vary then you will get another setup when i equal to n and t vary you will get another setup. So, this is how means uh, like this you will get n number of uh, means um, um, n number of modeling setups. So, with this we have to estimate. So, this is very complicated case uh, and it is also very interesting in the same times because you just uh, make a look in the particular original equation then you make i, I vary or t vary accordingly you will get subsequently different sets of models. So, it is very interesting if you have mathematical knowledge then obviously you will just uh, follow the structure and you create so many mathematical models ok I mean statistical models. So, now uh, the thing is that it is not only enough to uh, just to, uh, derive the statistical form of the model keeping i or t vary uh, one time it is constant and another time it will vary. So, it is same times we like to know what is the exactly our objective here to uh, represent all these structures. The basic objective is to know this uh, statistical significance of this particular models ok. So, we like to know all these parameter has to be statistical significant and the overall fitness of the model should be statistical significant. So, far as the overall fitness of this model is concerned we uh, we apply here f statistics ok. So, we have to apply here f statistic f statistic formula is here. RSS ok ordinarily squares minus RSS unreserved MET ok residuals one yeah, one is restricted another is unrestricted unrestricted ok uh, unrestricted uh, divide by RSS unrestricted uh, MET unrestricted restricted and unrestricted models into uh, into the degrees of freedom so, n t minus n minus t divided by divided by n plus t minus 2 ok n minus uh, n minus 2. So, this is how the degrees of freedom ok. So, this is how the uh, f statistic has to be calculated. So, this is ordinary square that is which you have derived from pool data analysis and then 
uh, un, uh, this restricted versus unrestricted, then obviously we will get the f statistic. That f statistic has to be statistical significant. If the this is the calculated value, if the calculated value will overtake the tabulated value with the particular level of significant, then that model is uh, somewhat uh, you know very structures and it can be used for uh, uh, you know prediction or forecastings. Okay. So, this is how the similarly we are we, we can discuss the uh, importance of the parameter or weightage of parameters of that particular signal that means we can observe which particular uh, unit individual unit is more efficient than the others uh, uh, similarly which time period is more effective uh, uh, than others. So, this is how we have to study the individual impacts. Okay. So, uh, uh, likewise we can also discuss the uh, you know uh, random effect models. Okay. So, what is the structure of random effect models? Okay, <coughs> you see, uh, likewise a uh, fixed effect model. So we will proceed random effect models. So you see, in the case of fixed effect models, so we we are targeting the impact of uh, cross-sectional observations or individual variation or time series variation on intercept. So the moment when we will uh, apply time series variation on individual in, uh, uh, you know variation in the intercept, so some kind of impact will go to the error term. So, we like to know what is the uh, exact variation on error terms when the uh, impact will go to error uh, error term then how is that setup. So, that setup we will discuss with the form of the uh, random effect model. So, what is the general format of random effect model? So, the random effect model basically will write like this way y i t is equal to alpha plus beta x i t okay, plus uh, you can say uh, you, you can put it here as mu t, okay, mu i t, let us say mu i t. So, this is general general format of, format of uh, random effect models. However, uh, mu i t, mu i t can be written as a u i, okay, u i plus v uh, t, okay, v t plus you can say w i t, okay, w i t. So, that means, this is equation 1 and where where a mu i t can be recorded, but that means the impact will be directly observed from the error term here. So, this particular structure is error for cross sectional component, this is due to this error is due to due to individual time series uh, means uh, due to cross sectional cross sectional framework, this is due to cross sectional uh, cross sectional framework, Okay, this is due to uh, time series framework, uh, time series uh, ok, it is better to put cross sectional components ok, not framework components, it is due to uh, error due to cross sectional components, this is error uh, due to error due to uh, time series component, time series component ok, and this is error due to both, error due to uh, due to both ok. So, here the standard assumption is that here the standard assumption is that for u i it will be normally distributed with 0 mean and unit variance ok. So, for v t it will be normally distributed with 0 mean and unit variance ok. Similarly, for w i t it will be normally distributed with 0 mean, 0, uh, mean and a uni, a, you know unit uh, variance okay unit variance so this is how the structure is uh, you can say uh, you can say observe so that means uh, what we have uh, observed here in the case of you know uh, random effect model which is uh, you know one partition of this fixed effect model because uh, means it is a very uh, integrated process first we observe the pool data case where uh, we are just applying the uh, means we are integrating the uh, variables together uh, cross sectional uh, sorry observation to uh, we are clubbing the observations uh, with you know time series and cross sectional then we directly apply OLS technique and observe the uh, estimated parameters and overall fitness of the models. So, now when we will uh, uh, you know uh, integrate cross sectional observation with the time series observation then obviously some kind of problems uh, uh, we will face. Uh, means the, uh, obviously by default there will be some problems that is you know the variation of individual impact cross sectional impact and the variation of time series impact so that we will capture through 
the if uh, you know fixed effect models and random effect models. So, when when these uh, cross sectional uh, observations uh, and time series observations we are targeting with the intercept that means, uh, when we means we are coming to a point that so individual observation and time series various uh, time series observation when we integrate then there will be some impact on this entire models. So, this model can be means further impact on the entire models. So, that can be uh, uh, that can be uh, investigated again with respect to the impact on intercept and the impact on the error terms. So, when we will discuss with the impact on uh, uh, intercept then obviously, so that particular model is called as a fixed effect model. So, right? so when we are targeting the impact of uh, individual variations and time series variation on error term then that will be observed through a, a, a random effect model. So, what we have already mentioned here. So, the simple simplest form of this a random effect model is like this. So, y i t equal to alpha plus beta x i t plus mu i t. So, where mu i t equal to u i plus v t plus w i t. So, this u i is error due to cross sectional component, this is v t is error due to time series component, then you know w i t is error due to both. Okay. So, now on an average uh, you know the, the deviation uh, you know deviation effect of time series is randomly represented by uh, V t here. So, now we have to see uh, means means before you go for this estimation the condition is that uh, your u should be normally distributed with 0 uh, mean 0 and unit variance uh, variance uh, unit variance similarly V t mean 0 and uh, having co constant variance similarly W i t uh, normally distributed with mean 0 and constant variance with this particular setup. So, for this part means in, uh, in this particular setup, so what we will observe here. So, the for this particular random effect models, for this particular random effect models, so we like we are very keen on the total variations of error terms. So, this is variations of error terms u i t uh, uh, means total variation that is uh, not u uh, i t, this is mu i t, okay, mu i t, this is total error variance is equal to uh, sigma square u plus sigma square v plus sigma square w. Okay. So, this is error variance, this is error variance, this is error variance, error variance due to due to cross cross sectional component, due to cross sectional component and this is uh, error variance, uh, error variance due to time series component, due to time series component and this is error error variance due to due to both. Okay. Okay. So, this is how uh, you know, uh, you know, for uh, the means if you will go by pool data analysis, for instance, uh, if you go by pool data analysis, then OLS pooled, OLS pooled is simply equal to variance of variance of uh, mu i t, okay, variance of mu i t, variance of mu i t is equal to is equal to sigma square w only, okay. So, now there are two cases here. So, there are two cases. Uh, if if sigma square u is equal to sigma square v, if sigma square u equal to sigma square v, then obviously uh, then obviously uh, you will use OLS. Okay. Uh, uh, if, if sigma square u, u equal to sigma square v, then you will get you will go for OLS estimations. Okay. If 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 sigma square u not equal to sigma square v then you have to go by GLS technique, you have to go by GLS technique. Okay. So, that means, here the, there are two different cases here. So, one case uh, means, oh, means total variance of error term is equal to uh, sigma square u, sigma square v and sigma square w. So, sigma square v, uh, sigma square v uh, is the error error variance due to uh, time series component, sigma square is error variance due to cross sectional component and sigma, uh, uh, sigma square w is error variance due to both. Okay. So, now, uh, so far as the technique wise concerned, so uh, we will uh, either we can apply OLS technique or we can apply the GLS technique. Okay. So, if the variance of this and this are equal, then we will apply OLS technique and get this uh, get the error variance and if you know if the uh, sigma square u and sigma square v are not equal, then you have to go for GLS technique. But you know, uh, what is if for if the for the case two where case two so we have to proceed by two two steps again. First you apply 
OLS on uh, random equation models. Okay, you apply OLS on random equation model. Okay, then calculate the RSS to estimate the sample variance. Okay, and calculate the RSS in the sample variance. Then apply again GLS techniques here. Then you apply GLS techniques here uh, uh, by using this uh, uh, error variance through the random effect models. So this is how the structure of random effect model uh, in the case of panel data setting. So all together, so all together, so we have we have three different sets of uh, uh, panel data modeling. So one we have discussed uh, pool data set uh, setup, then uh, then uh, uh, fixed effect modeling, then random effect modeling. Uh, so in the case of uh, in the case of pool data modeling, so we are just uh, clubbing the data without to studying the impact of time series component and uh, cross sectional component. But in the case of uh, uh, means once uh, uh, it is not authentic uh, or it, it is not you know most feasible so because the moment you will clob the time series data and cross section data then obviously there are certain uh, impact will uh, go to the entire models. So that uh, impact means time series impact variation of time series impact and variation of cross sectional impact. Uh, so the, or to that entire time uh, entire you know panel data models. So once the uh, the impact will go, it may be go to error term. So that is with respect to individual. That is what we have written here with respect to uh, gamma i, and uh, it may go to also with respect to because of the time component that we have represented here delta t, and uh, it can also it can also go to it can also go to the error term altogether. So now if it will go to the uh, intercept either in the form of mu i uh, means uh, gamma i or delta t or both uh, then obviously it is called as a fixed effect models and if it will directly go to the uh, error component then it is called as a random effect model. So obviously we have we have in fact discussed the entire issue about these three techniques uh, means uh, how we have to go with the pool data analysis, how we will go with the fixed effect modeling and how we will go with the random effect modeling. So we have also discussed the various estimation procedures of the pool data technique, and we have also discussed the uh, uh, you know uh, you, uh, we have very uh, discussed with the respect to fixed effect modeling, and also we have discussed with the random effect modeling. So now uh, you know uh, uh, in fact you know the, uh, the fixed effect modeling uh, is more interesting than random effect modeling because we are observing intercept with it, uh, with respect to individual dimension and di uh, you know uh, time series dimension that that is how because the parameters are too much lengthy so you know we we, uh, we have just uh, moved uh, you know uh, uh, gamma i and de delta t so gamma i so for, for instance it has lots of integration with the domain variable so when you will say uh, gamma i equal to 1 2 3 like this way so then you you apply gamma 1 with a unit matrix so your first component will be 1 then rest will be 0 then second if gamma equal to 2 then you know the vector will be first 0 then uh, second vector will be unit other other items will be 0 similarly you will proceed. So this is how the structure all about of the means it has a well connected with the dummy variable technique that to dummy independence technique similarly uh, it can be observed through time series issues also. Uh, delta t. So, for t equal to 1 then obviously you multiply delta 1 into unit matrix where first component will be unit and others will be 0 and sim similarly when delta 2 then for second unit will be uh, 1 then others will remain 0. So, accordingly we proceed. So, the, uh, be careful about that issue when will we when will we add one after another uh, you know individual units and time series units then obviously your parameters will be start increasing and in the same time the sample will get reduced. So okay, so this is one aspect of one aspect of fixed one features of the fixed effect modeling. So in the an, another case uh, you have a random effect modeling um, where the di direct impact will go to the error component where uh, where the uh, you know uh, parameters are very less in numbers. Okay, so parameters are less in numbers. So in that context in that context you must be very means you must find out the feasibility of this these two models so means the problem is that whether you have to apply the fixed effect model or random effect model or pool data models in fact there are uh, uh, there are few tricks i have already mentioned so it depends upon the variations of t and n for instance it's like that way if t greater than n then it is choose is fixed effect models 
okay if n greater than t then you apply the random effect models okay t represents time observation and t represents uh, sorry n represents cross sectional units so now when t greater than n so then obviously uh, n will be dominate so in that case fixed effect modeling is this is usually thumb rule if n greater than t then you apply random effect models but uh, some uh, but it is it is not uh, it is not at all harm if you apply both the models and they find out which model will give the best results with respect to particular uh, problem setup so with this you know uh, we 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 mo means most of the components we have discussed in the panel data setting so that to pull data analysis fixed effect modeling and random effect modeling so so far as a, a use is concerned or you know application is concerned now uh, with respect to particular problem with respect to sample observation uh, that to you know individual units cross sectional units and time series uh, uh, units so you have to make a decision besides there are so many statistical tests are there so the test will give you indication which particular model is more effective for that particular problem so with the means out of all the means whether it is you know uh, n greater than t or t greater than n or you can say parameters high or parameters are less or time periods is high time periods are less so in all these cases it is okay but in the same times the uh, accurate investigation or authentic investigation will be come, come forward if you will really apply statistical test like you know lots of uh, uh, LM test, F test uh, etc are there. So, you have to apply all these tests and you find out the reliability of the model. Then you can choose which model is the best for your analysis and that too with your particular problem. With this we have, uh, we have finished this particular panel data modeling. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.